Today, I wanna to talk about something super important to all of us, and that is retirement. While I'm not a personal financial advisor or fiduciary or anything of that sort, I think it's practical to share where I'm at if I'm gonna talk about a topic like this. This is the only account where you're going to see the real balance. This is my actual John Hancock 401k balance at 33 years old. This is not to brag, but this is to give you some practical tips that I have used to get to this point. So let's go. Now, as we take a look at the average 401k balance by age, by personal capital, I'll include the link down below to this article. But I want you to take a look at the difference between the average 401k balance and the median 401k balance. The median is much more accurate because it grabs the middle number between the highest and lowest numbers, 50% on each side, and essentially grabs the exact middle of that curve. I want to be transparent that the reason that I shared my own balance is not not to brag about it, but simply to show you that I'm ahead of the curve on this and therefore this advice is worthwhile in my opinion. As you can see here, for my age group, the median 401k balance is $10,402. The question now becomes, how did I get here? And what can you do in your personal situation to reach those numbers? Now, I want a disclaimer that not everyone has the exact same situation with their employment, their ability to add to the account. So take everything I say with a grain of salt because this is based on my personal situation. However, employer matches and things like that do tend to be an option. So take all of that into account to determine the, what's right for your situation. So here's my list. Number one, start your 401k early or as early as you can. I do know some individuals who are older who haven't yet started it. The key is start it yesterday. Do it as soon as you can. I started my 401k the first time I was offered one at 24 years old. Compounding interest is crucial to this growing over time. That's why you wanna get started as soon as possible. Number two, take advantage of an employer match. I know individuals who do not do this and they absolutely should. In the case of my employers, the first employer that I started with offered up to a 3% match. So if I put in 3%, they would also provide 3%. So I would have 6%. My current employer matches up to 5%. Number three, aim for 10% per paycheck. This is what a lot of experts recommend, and I also highly recommend. This is something that I achieved very early on by using that employer match and by making this a priority. Number four, with each raise, raise your allocation. This was actually the crucial step that I took that made the most sense and was the easiest to absorb. I was already living on what I made each paycheck, so it wasn't difficult for me each time I got a raise to instead put that towards my 401k, thereby reaching that 10% plus situation early on. Just for reference, at one point, I was putting in as much as 16% with my employer match. Currently, I have reduced that down to 10% because of other situations and investments that I am looking to build out. Number five, risk early on, taper later. This simply means that I approach it as the riskier assets as I'm at a younger age. And later on, if I feel that I wanna more protect that wealth, I will taper it or look for risk averse, more risk averse plans. My company offers five plans. I currently have the second most aggressive plan that I personally use based on historical performance and a lot of how it's allocated is what I currently prefer. Number six, stay long and review yearly. This simply means keep your 401k invested come rain or shine, come market correction or bull run. It doesn't matter, but you need to take a look at it yearly at the very least. This bleeds into number seven, make it a priority, meaning take a look at it. I know multiple people who do not prioritize nor know anything about their 401k 
and just simply have that deduction each paycheck, when in reality, they should be assessing what they want to take on as far as risk and how the performance is actually going so that they might be able to optimize to their situation. Now, again, anyone who follows my channel knows I don't like to share my main accounts. I normally just share test accounts because a lot of people are just starting out. This is not to make you feel bad about your situation. Let me repeat that everyone's in a different situation. Don't feel bad if you don't match up to these numbers. These are just giving you a general viewpoint of where you might be and where you could be going. These seven things are genuinely what I've done to attempt to build this into wealth because I want to be able to retire and not have to worry about this and hopefully leave a better situation for my children, even better than what my parents have left for me. Just for your reference, not only do I have a 401k through my current employer, but I also have a Roth IRA that I do investments through as well. I like the fact through the Roth, I personally can make decisions as far as investments, as well as having the 401k where someone else is managing it. That way I kind of get the advantage of both situations. And that's in part why I went from a 17% per paycheck 401k situation down to about 11% per paycheck. I highly recommend you look at your own personal situation and determine what's right for you because no one else can make that determination outside of yourself because no one knows your situation like you do. I just want to lay out once again, this is not to show off, this is not to make anyone feel bad, this is simply giving credence to the fact that I do know what I'm talking about based on what I've done. And that's what I hope to spread to a lot of people who may not understand or may not be making this as much of a priority as they probably should. I appreciate you guys so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye.